Orbital notation or box notation. Unit 3, electrons. Orbital notation is basically just another way of expressing the electron configuration of an atom. It's useful in determining the quantum numbers, and it's useful um, in seeing the electron pairing. Um, you kind of have to know how to do the regular electron configuration in order to make a proper box notation. The first thing I want to note you to notice, this is our quantum address periodic table, and it is how we group the electrons in their sections. These two first columns are the S sections of the periodic table. These six rows over here um, are the P section of the periodic table. And these 10 columns here are the D section, and these 14 down here at the bottom are the F section of the periodic table. When you write a electron configuration, you need to know the level, the sublevel, and the number of elements in that section. To write a box notation, you need to know how many electrons you're going to distribute, but they distribute in the level and then the sublevel of the periodic table just like we did for the electron configuration. When you do box notation, you follow three basic chemistry principles or rules. One's the off-ball principle, that electrons will fill orbitals starting at the lowest available energy level before filling the higher ones. In other words, I'm going to fill the one energy level before I'm going to go into the two energy level. The second rule that I'm going to follow is Hund's rule. And that says when filling sublevels, um, other than the S electron, they're placed in individual orbitals before they pair up. So I will explain that with um, me putting in the electrons in just a second. And then the third principle that we're going to be talking about using is Pauli's exclusion principle. And that's when we draw electrons, we use the up and the down arrows. So if an electron is paired up in a box, one arrow is going up, and the second arrow is going down. And that's because one has the positive half spin, and one has the negative half spin. So here's the element aluminum, and I'm going to show you where that is on the periodic table. It's right here. It's got 13 electrons to distribute. So if we distribute 13 electrons, into the orbitals, we will do them like this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is showing me the Pauli exclusion principle that um, I'm going to use electrons, each of them are going into one box before um, having them be paired up. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You'll notice that this is showing us that if we look we have one electron, the negative spin of the electron, because the negatives come before the positives, in the P section. So if we go back to our periodic table, we'll see that that's true. Aluminum has one electron, a negative one-half electron, in the P section. So it's just a visual representation of the electron configuration. So this is called orbital notation. Here are some other examples. This is nitrogen. Nitrogen is number seven. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll notice that these arrows are going up instead of down. 
that's really a moot point. It, it's just if one is going one direction, the other goes the other. Just be consistent when you're putting in your electrons. I have a tendency to do the down ones first before the up ones, but it really doesn't matter. Um, oxygen, you'll notice, has one set that's been paired. It has one more electron than the nitrogen. So it filled up all of the P sections with one electron before coming back in and pairing up the next electron. So let's do some examples. Um, let's pick an element off the periodic table. So um, let's do um, magnesium. It's number 12. So we're going to do, we'll need to do magnesium. G. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. You'll notice with magnesium, it looks like I have all of my S electrons filled. So if I go back to the periodic table and I look at magnesium, you'll see that yes, I finish. I have put in both the negative and the positive spin on the magnesium. So my whole S um, orbital has been filled. Um, let's go ahead and do another example. Um, let's do copper. Copper, you'll see, is number 29. So I've got to distribute 29 electrons because this one is going to be copper. This was magnesium, which has 12. So 29. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29. You'll see from this visual representation, I am one short of filling up my D section on the periodic table. And if I go look, I will see that I am one short of filling up the D section on the periodic table. The other method to um, orbital or box notation um, uses circles. And this is a, a different method, but it's exactly the same. So the only difference is, instead of using those arrows, it uses negative and plus signs. So let's go ahead and um, do fluorine here. And fluorine is number nine, so that's one Two, notice I put the negative electron in before putting the positive in. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you'll notice that I am one short of filling my P sections, the P section of the periodic table, and fluorine has nine electrons. Okay? Uh, let's look at iron. Let's do iron. It's number 26. So that's distributing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. You'll see we have done all the negative electrons, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that we have done one on the positive side. So Fe is my first one in the D section that completes the orbital that I've already put the negative ones in and I come back and complete the orbital. One last try. Let's do an ion this time. The difference between an atom and an ion is an ion has a charge. So let's look at oxygen and an oxygen ion would be a minus two. What would that mean if I'm a minus two? It means I have two extra electrons. Oxygen has eight electrons as an atom. So as an ion, it would have 10 electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You'll notice that as an ion, an element has the configuration of its closest noble gas. So it is now stable, whereas this one is clearly unstable. It has orbitals that are half filled. This one, unstable. Orbitals that are half filled. Whereas oxygen is stable. All of the orbitals are filled to capacity that are needed to create. The, these orbitals that aren't in use don't technically exist when they're not in use. So this would be the outermost orbital is filled.